Welcome to the Skies Over Longmont for September 2020. I'm Staff Astronomer John Answorth for Longmont Public Media. In the news this month, we have a comet again, but it's one we already talked about. Comet Neowise C2020F3, discovered by NASA's Near Earth Object Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer is moving away from the Earth and the Sun, heading out and getting dim, losing its tail, becoming a challenging object for astronomers. But as it passed, the Hubble Space Telescope took a series of images and combined those images to try to get a glimpse down inside the nucleus of the comet. There's a zoom in on that. You can see a bright spot that's gas, fresh, gas being emitted from the rubble pile, dust all being illuminated by sunlight. This is not giving off light itself, it's just shining by reflecting sunlight. Pretty neat, little shadow, you can see a hint of right there. The Arecibo radio telescope in Puerto Rico was damaged. It was built over a natural sinkhole began operations in 1963 and was the largest radio telescope for over half a century. China came on with its fast dish, a 500 meter aperture, that's a big dish, in 2016 surpassing this. But one of these upper cables broke on a relatively calm day. A tropical storm had passed a few days earlier, but it fell and cut through the delicate dish. Obviously, the telescope is not being used now, and they are assessing the damage to see what repairs can be made. You might have heard in the news that an asteroid is going to pass close to the Earth the day before Election Day. I think it's more alarm than it is something to be more than casually curious about. This is called Asteroid 2018 BP-1. It's very small. That's probably the most important takeaway. It's 6.5 feet. It's about as tall as a human. And it really doesn't pose a threat to Earth. The Planetary Defense Coordination Office says there was a 0.41 chance of it entering the planet atmosphere. And if it did, it would disintegrate. Anything made it to Earth's surface 70% of the Earth is ocean, and a lot of the rest of it is wilderness, so yeah, not something to worry about. Back to big star parties. Well, one star party from last month did occur. In September, the Illinois Dark Sky Idaho Star Party were trying to go on. They have now canceled. But some of these are still on the books. Bootleg Fall Star Party in Illinois. Alberta Star Party in September 18th to 20th is going to be online. So that's something you can take a look at from wherever you are. Hidden Hollow in Ohio in person. Astronomy at the Beach in Michigan. It will be online. So that's something, again, you could probably participate in. So go search for those and see what they offer at their sites. As we get into fall and winter, there are fewer star parties. We're sort of running out, but at least three of them in New Jersey, Eastern Sierra Dark Sky Festival, the Jasper Dark Sky Festival in Alberta, are still all planned to be on. And there are two in November that for now are still a go. And the best place to find out what's happening is go to skyandtelescope.org and look at the, your news 2020 Star Party updates. Your Astro 101 lesson for September 2020. We might as well talk about rocks from space, meteors and beyond. Meteors are these little streaks of light that you see in the sky at night that can occur any night, any time. We talked last month about meteor showers. There's a bunch of them happening at once all seeming to come from one radiant point in the sky that names the shower. But what a meteor needs are three things. You need a rock, a grain of sand, a speck of dust, or something larger. High speed, 
and it needs to hit an atmosphere and burn up or at least become very hot due to friction. That's a meteor. Meteoroids are a rock out in space. A meteorite is a rock that's landed on Earth that you could pick up. And since you can get some good money for selling a meteorite, you can remember the difference between meteorite and meteoroid by, all right, I found a meteorite. I'm annoyed, it's only a meteoroid. Sorry, that was bad. There are also asteroids. These are larger bodies usually, They're traveling around the sun in their own orbit. Most of them in the solar system are located between Mars and Jupiter, but there are asteroids out to the outer reaches of the solar system and in the inner planets. Asteroids near Earth and crossing Earth orbit are called Apollo asteroids. Our final item in the rock in space category are comets. These, like I said earlier, are rubble piles or collections of dust and frozen ices and gases. And as they get close to the sun, their orbit carries them in to the inner solar system. The gases vaporize, shooting out of jets like we saw with Neowise. That carries some dust away. The gas, easily ionized, actually interacts with the solar magnetic field where the dust trails away from the sun. It always is pointing away from the sun, so as the comet's coming in, the dust tail is behind the comet, like you would expect. As the comet is moving away from the sun, it's actually moving into its own tail. Let's take a look at the sky above your backyard this month. In the dusk in the evening, we have Mercury back. Remember, it goes around the sun in 88 days. So it switches sides of the sun very regularly. This month, it is very low in the west in the early month and then low in the southwest by the end of the month. In the twilight, it will take some work to get a view of Mercury, especially with binoculars. Jupiter and Saturn are up until late after midnight. They're up all through the evening. This is a great time to go out and see them. They're very obvious. Close together, they draw your attention to the sky. They're highest in the south after a sunset. In telescope, they're growing slightly smaller as we move away from them, as we travel faster around the sun than they do. In the very beginning of the month of September, just after sunset, Here's the glow of the sun down here on the very right of the frame. There's Mercury really low close to it. Here's the halfway point in the sky connecting the south point to the zenith, the directly overhead point in the sky and into the north. And to the left here are Jupiter and Saturn. At the end of the month, there's the sun down here. Mercury has gotten a little further away from the sun, but it's still very low in the southwest. Jupiter and Saturn are a little closer to the meridian. On either side of midnight this month will be both Neptune and Uranus, challenging things to look at, but that was the challenge previous month. Interesting little fact from Sky and Telescope is that this month Neptune is almost exactly four light hours away. So when you see the light of Neptune, it is for our old light. The light from the sun is about eight and a half minutes old. Gives you an idea of the scale of the solar system. Uranus is in the constellation Aries, and Mars rises a couple hours after sunset and is up for the rest of the night, so it's almost up all night like Neptune and Uranus. Going to about September 15th, out at midnight, Here's Jupiter and Saturn getting ready to set. Up near the meridian, high over the southern sky is Neptune. And in the southeastern sky, a little higher up, is Mars and Uranus. In the pre-dawn sky, we just have Venus left. 
rises about three and a half hours before sunrise it's leaving us behind and so it is dimming as the month goes on if we go out just before sunrise again about September 15th there's the Sun just about to rise the moon happens to be being close to new at this point and Venus is located very obviously up here in the constellation Cancer let's take a look at what the Sun is doing and the length of day at the beginning of the month the Sun is 58 degrees above the horizon at local noon and drops to 47 degrees up we are definitely heading towards winter sunrise at 628 at the beginning of the month and then almost 7 o'clock a.m. at the end of the month the sunset starts at 730 at the beginning of the month and is back at 642 at the end of the month on Tuesday September 22nd at 730 a.m. we experience the autumnal equinox fall begins and contrary to popular belief the day is not exactly 12 hours long it's 12 hours 8 minutes long that's because our orbit is not a perfect circle and there's something called the equation of time that uh, figures into us going faster and slower different parts of our orbit but it's close Denver and Longmont are about 40 degrees north latitude if you take 90 degrees minus that 40 that gives you the altitude of the Sun because the Sun is right on the equator in the sky right above the equator on the earth our feature object this month will be Neptune we looked at Uranus last month it's a beautiful picture of the planet but in binoculars this is much more what you'll see it looked like a star slightly bluish in nature we had a telescope out it may look like a very small disk that's bluish that may or may not be one of its moons not really sure it is not one of the more picturesque things in the sky to see but it's one of our bigger planets so it's worth hunting for our Longmont observing challenge for September will be the Andromeda Galaxy. You can see a galaxy with your naked eye. Well, the Milky Way is a galaxy too, and there are a couple of others you can glimpse in a dark sky if you let your eyes get adapted to the dark. But this is the big one. Magnitude 3.44 overall. It is three degrees wide, which makes it about six degrees wider than the diameter of the moon. So the moon is about that big in the center. And to see this, you go out now in the late evening when Mars is up in the eastern southeastern sky. Look to the southeast. High up, you'll see this big square. It's called the Great Square of Pegasus. There's a horse, a flying horse here. And over here is the galaxy right there. The way to find it, I'll draw some markers here. Is it there's Mars, go up above Mars, a little bit to the right, you'll see the big square. Go off the upper left corner of the square, go one star, two stars, make a right turn, one hop, and you'll see a little fuzzy patch there. And again, if you need to look a little off to the side and think back to that location, see that fuzzy patch, you are looking at light that's about two and a half million years old, two and a half million light years away. That is on a collision course with our galaxy, but it won't be here for about 5 billion years, so don't panic. All right, astronomy events near Longmont are still kind of skimpy, and a lot of things are closed and canceled, but we'll do our best to grab a few here. The Longmont Astronomical Society, September 17th, is having via Zoom David Elmore, talking about forensic astronomy and the dating, finding, figuring out the date and time, of Ansel Adams' moonrise picture taken at Hernandez, New Mexico. I've seen articles on this. It is pretty amazing. They are detectives sleuthing their way through clues in the picture and shadows and 
things like that to figure out when he was out there taking that photo. But their open observing night under the stars at Rabbit Mountain is still canceled. It would have been September 19th. The old Thompson Observatory is still closed through December 31st, but they're going to try to possibly get some Zoom meetings and speakers, maybe even some views through a telescope via Zoom or other online tools in October or maybe November. So check starkids.org for that. Estes Park Memorial Observatory is closed to the end of September. Check out Angels Above for programming that might resume. Northern Colorado Astronomical Society, by the time this is recorded, has already had Dr. Angela Collier talk about how do galaxies get their shapes. Check out their archive on their website, nocoastro.org. The Fisk Planetarium and Samros Bosch Observatory are both closed for now. Check their websites for possible opening times or events. And as promised, we're ending with the John Suggests further reading. The further reading is, this month, weather lists. If you want to go out and look, you don't want to pack your telescope or plan a big drive and clear your schedule to head out into a dark sky only to find clouds. The website skippysky.com.au of Australia is a fantastic site for getting future satellite images. Cleardarksky.com lets you pick a spot on the Earth where you want to observe. It will show you hour by hour sky conditions, temperature, humidity, precipitation if it's going to happen, and even how much twinkling you'll see in the stars. We covered Observer Pro and Scope Nights apps last month for their observing assistance and they have weather functions built into them. The website 7timer.info is another great one that generates a hour by hour forecast for you. The app Clear Outside does the same thing. And if you really want to get into future satellite image maps, and you don't mind clicking a little bit and exploring tropicaltidbits.com go to the forecast model section I like the GFS click on the upper dynamics button down at the bottom that's confusing and choose in the drop down simulate infrared satellite then you can scroll forward and backward in time and watch future clouds pass your location over the next few months we will detail how some of these sites work. I'll kind of come up with a tutorial, get some screenshots of a site or two each, because you really need to be able to see through the atmosphere to enjoy the night sky. And the astronomer in me and the meteorologist in me both like to work together. If you have any additions, corrections, any suggestions, please email me at johnsworth at gmail.com. This has been the Skies Over Longmont for September 2020. Keep looking up!